Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how you can creatively express yourself in Adobe Photoshop. So I think as we go through life, we get all these thoughts and feelings inside our heads, whether they're good, whether they're bad. Um, sometimes they might just be motivational quotes, whatever it is, having an outlet to be able to express that, I think is super important. So for me, Sometimes I find talking about things difficult, so I like to express myself creatively. And doing that through design is one way that I find really helpful to do that. So as you can see on screen, this is something that I did recently. I was having a particularly bad day, feeling a bit down, and I just got out of the house, went to the gym, and I felt better. And I started doing things, felt a bit more motivated, and I came up with this, channel your pain into power line, and I put it with an image. So I just kind of took all of those feelings, combined it together into some kind of creative piece of design and just put it out there and uh, just felt better. It was like that creative outlet. So we're going to learn how to do this today. So this is an image here of a chap looking particularly fueled and passionate about something. And we have that image here. Now you can do this with paid stock images like this or you can search on Google or anywhere if you're using it for personal use. So we're going to grab this image here and I've created a new artboard already in Photoshop. It's a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And it's set to RGB color mode. So we can go up to select all. You'll see the marching ants appear around our image and we can go to edit and copy switch over to our main tutorial PSD and go edit paste and it will paste this in. Of course, it's incredibly large, so we can only see the tiny corner of it at the moment. However, if we right click this layer and select convert to smart object, what that does is that means it will save the settings of this image at this size. So if we make the image smaller and then scale it back up, we won't have any loss in quality. So next we can go up to edit down to free transform and just hold shift and alt and we'll scale that down towards the center and just double click or press enter to set that in place. So you can see we made it a little bit too small there, but because it is a smart object, we can go to edit free transform again. The shortcut for that is command or control T and again, just hold shift and alt and scale that back up. And as I say, because this is a smart object, scaling back up if we go too small isn't going to cause any loss of quality. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to crop, rather than have the whole image, we're going to crop really focusing in on the arm, the gah, and the man's face and that magnificent beard as well. So we're going to crop like this, bring this down a little bit. So depending on the image you're using, you might have an image which is a bit more uh, busy and complex. You might add an overlay and you might put your text over the image itself. But as we saw in the example at the beginning, this image has quite a nice plain background. So we're gonna use this to really place our text over here. So image selection at the beginning is also quite important. So we have our image positioned like so. So once you're happy with the crop, just go over to the type tool here and just left click anywhere and it will create a new text layer and we can type some text. So let's go with the same message. We've got channel your pain into power. Now, of course, this is far too long. Uh, it spans, you know, where it runs into his face basically, which we don't want. So let's just select the type tool again and we're gonna try and break this. So we'll just hit return, give that a line break. Okay, so that's the whole message. Now we want to really put some emphasis on one of those words. And as you saw in the original example, this is going to be the word power. So if we just adjust that line break here, so we're just pressing backspace and return to just kind of get this right. So something like this. Now, rather than edit the word power within this text layer, we're going to create a new text layer just so we can edit that one and position it separately. When you have lots and lots of different fonts, weights, sizes, all within one text layer, it becomes quite difficult to move them around really quickly. 
So let's just duplicate this layer by right clicking that text layer, select duplicate layer, hit OK, and we'll just hold shift and bring that down. Now we hold shift to make sure that it moves perfectly vertically down and doesn't stray off to the side. And we can delete all of the other words. And then again, from the top one, delete the word power. So we're separating the two. And we can select the text at the bottom and just scale that up from here or select one of the presets from the top. Or we can simply just go to edit and free transform and hold alt and shift so it stays central and just scale it up that way. So that's quite a quick and easy way of scaling it up. Remember, double click or press enter to set that transformation in place and then select the type tool, select the words and you can go to the color picker at the top and pick any color and you can see that changing in real time. Now I want a lot of emphasis on the word power here, so I'm going to keep this white and click OK. And to come out of that selection, just click the main selection tool at the top of the toolbar. And then we could bring this down and start to adjust the sizing. So remember, we can just use that free transform shortcut to quickly bring that down and we'll bring the wording up. So a lot more emphasis on power. So it's really a case of finding a balance between emphasizing certain words whilst not becoming too overpowering, ironically, <laughs> of the actual text itself. And we can also increase the line height a bit here. You can see that the line height, also known as leading, is a little bit too tight. So if we press Command or Control A with the type tool to select all of the text. And from this option at the top here, or from the character panel on the right, we can just increase, adjust that there. Perfect. And if we zoom out, we can see this starting to come together now. And I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. So adjust this. Now I don't want to bring this up too much because I think it just becomes a little bit cramped and it needs that little bit of space. It doesn't necessarily need to be bigger uh, for the whole message to be more impactful. But I think a little bit of space. Remember you can use the arrow keys as well. And then we can hold shift to select both of these layers and then use that free transform option again and just adjust the sizing nice and quickly. So that is a really quick way of resizing multiple layers rather than going into the text properties and doing it per layer one at a time. Halfway through a tutorial and my phone goes off. Are you kidding me? Anyway, so we can resize this like so. That's what I get for not putting my phone on silent. Okay, so we've positioned that like so. And the color, I believe it's actually remembered this from when I actually created this. So originally the text would have been black, just very default black. And if I remember rightly, I sampled his hair actually. So I want the text and the image to kind of have some degree of synergy. I want them to work well together. So with this text selected, I'm gonna go and sample a color from the image. Now I want to sample one of the colors from the image. With the image that we've chosen, we've got the kind of white of his shirt. Well, we've already kind of used something very similar for the power text, but we've also got the skin color and the hair color, very distinctive colors within this image. So whatever image you're using, you may have slightly different colors. So we could sample the skin. It kind of works. Uh, but if I sample the hair, I think that just creates a bit more contrast with the background. So it makes it a little bit easier to stand out. And of course, sampling this gives me a very accurate color of that exact pixel. So if it's too light or too dark, I can still adjust this manually from the color picker. So visually, I'm adjusting it manually, but it still looks like it matches the image. And I can just come out of that. And actually I can select the word power, pick the color picker at the top, and actually sample a color from the top he's wearing. So rather than going with perfect white, I'm just gonna kind of set this off white, a little bit more kind of, uh, a little bit more creamy like his top. 
something like this. And that just kind of helps strengthen that link, that synergy between the text and the image. And you can do this with any number of images. Uh, you know, if you have a more complex image, as I mentioned earlier, you can add a new layer in, select a color. So we'll go with, uh, let's say black, and you can fill that layer with black. And then we'll just double click and rename this and just bring that opacity down. And you can adjust that as you need to. And then if you have lots and lots of text uh, or your image is a lot more busy, um, your image, if you have a black layer, your text will stand out on top of your image. So that's one way to kind of help text stand out over an image. Uh, if I were to move that over here, you can see it gets quite lost. But then if I add that black layer in, yes, it does darken the image, but it also makes it easier for text to stand out. Another thing we can actually do is we can get a little bit more creative. So we'll add a new layer. Uh, let's go and pick a color. We've got a few kind of blue hues up here. So let's go and pick a really punchy blue. Just see kind of where this goes. So I've selected the brush tool and I'm gonna pick one of Photoshop's default feather brushes and adjust the brush size using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard. So nice and quickly. And with that new layer selected, uh, I'm just gonna paint actually. We're just gonna paint around here, just a big swoosh. Now, whilst that looks terrible on its own, there's a few things that we can do now. We'll start by laming this in layer blue. And we can bring the opacity down. So you can see if I bring that down to something like 10 or 20%, somewhere between there, it adds a very subtle blue hue to the image. Blue hue, that's quite hard to say over and over again, blue hue. So that adds that to the image. So we don't always want it at 100%, but what we can also do in Photoshop is we can use the blending options. So we can change normal to soft light, for example, and you can see there, even at 100%, it doesn't, it doesn't look too crazy. And we can actually bring that down Let's go for 50%. And we could even go a little bit further, drop it down to 30. And we've got that subtle blue color. And then we'll do one again over here. We'll sample this color with the color picker on the left. And then we're just gonna manually move that over here and pick a more vibrant version of it. And just brush that in there. So we're doing this on separate layers. And we've got lots and lots of blending options. So depending on your image, your background color, the colors you use and how you blend them, there's infinite <laughs> possible combinations here. So you can see that just kind of changing that blending mode on the green to darken, that just kind of really does blend that quite nicely over the image. And I can drop that opacity a little bit. So I'm turning that layer on and off. It's actually incredibly subtle and individually you might not notice the difference switching one layer on and off, but if you have 10, 20 different layers, all with tiny, tiny little design tweaks like this, it can all add up to create a very different and much more impactful piece of creative work at the end. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, creating something like this. As I say, I think it's really important to have some kind of outlet uh, just generally in life and for me, having a creative outlet, a way to express myself, my inner thoughts and feelings is awesome and really really helpful so there we go if you enjoyed this tutorial please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it take care and i'll see you next time